Good morning, everybody. Say good morning, Green. Oh, good morning. Well, <laughs> there's corn. Look at all the corn on the ground. Corn on the ground. So the the legs stop, but the auger's feeding the leg kept running. Ooh. And so burn the belts off, spilled the corn everywhere, and we get to fix it. Now riddle me this. I don't work on this farm. I've got my own farm <laughs> with its own problems. Yet somehow when I come home every day, there's some new problem for me to fix over here too. How does that work? I am unsure. Anyways, so apparently on this cold, chilly winter morning, Grant and I are going to be replacing some belts on the Wilson's grain system. I have also discovered that no matter how new or cool or simple looking a bin site is, there's They've problems. Always got problems. There's always problems, like no matter what. Um, even if it's brand new, like maybe it's really cold I and corn or the and the cord is wet and it plugs and yeah. bin sites are really, really complicated. Um, and I admire people like my dad and grand's dad and my grandpa who just like know exactly what's going on at the drop of the hat. I'm still working on it. <laughs> Pretty soon, Grant's pickup is going to be going in and getting airbags and new rims and new tires. And Grant is very, very excited about that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, that's exciting. So, I mean, it's not really a build, it's a facelift. A facelift, yes. Uh, yeah, so I would say those belts are pretty much gonzo junk. Hi, Betty. Good morning. Crazy puppy. How are you? Oh, she's a cutie. She's psycho though. <laughs> nice little bridge here. Oh, new belts. Ah, yes. This this looks like a problem here. Hmm. Ah, uh, so well, where do the belts go? Here? Uh, yeah. Hmm. Disintegrated them. Wow. Okay. Well, let's get to it. Grant, do you have any like really good farm hacks on how to properly put a belt on? Have big arms and the power turned off. Watch your fingers. I don't want you to get pinched. Oh, hey! Nice job! We only use, usually run one belt, so if it, like something bad happens, it just burns the belt off and doesn't wreck anything. We're like, if someone were to get into it, like, they have a better chance of not getting into it. Yikes. Oh boy. Are you hauling out corn? Uh, or your dad? No, that's, that's, that's all me. Okay, all right. Oh my goodness, I do not like the winter time. Let it be known, it is too cold. Uh, but let me explain what's going on here. All right, so in the harvest time, obviously, we harvested all of our corn, all of our soybeans, and some of it got trucked right from the field into town, but then the rest of it gets stored in these bins here. And then as we sell our corn, we have to fulfill our contracts. So whether that be for 1,000 bushels, 10,000 bushels, or 20,000 bushels, then we either truck it into wherever we contracted it through ourselves, or we hire truckers like they have to come to the farm and pick it up. And that just means that when the truckers arrive, like they just did, we have to have everything ready for them. It's working. Okay, well that's good. <laughs> we, have, we have to have everything ready for the truckers to come fill their trucks up. So that means we have to get all of Grant's corn, which is in this bin right here, out of the bin, up an auger, or no, up a leg, up an, okay. an auger, I'll, up a I'll leg. Okay, well I'll just show you, it'll be easy. You have to talk really loudly. Oh, 
comes it in with this one. Okay, so now it's going up another auger, and then I'll just take over. Okay. There's the corn. Okay. Up that auger, and then up that leg. And then down that blue tube to that bin right there. The chute up there. Okay. And then out that chute into the truck. All right, so this is their unloading bin. So this is not like permanent storage for grain. This is just what gets emptied into trucks. It's 20,000 bushel bin, 5,000 of it can be unloaded into a truck out of the chute. Perfect. And here we go. It's time to unload some corn. What do we have here? Oh my tickets. So I know how much grain has been taken in. Okay, very cool. So wait, are these the bill of ladings or the tickets? So these are the actual tickets. They say how many bushels. Okay, so truckers drop these off in these little mailbox once it's been hauled in, yep. each load. So like, that's how many bushels got hauled in. Very cool. Oh no. Grant, that was so quick. When I tell you, he heard that belt squeaking and launched himself out of the pickup. Another belt bad? No. The truck is full and ready to pull away. And Grant is venturing on top of this bin to open the top. There's a tiny little door on the very top. And he's not going to get in because climbing in bins is pretty dangerous. Um, but he's just going to open that door and shine a flashlight inside and see how much corn is in it. Because the leg unexpectedly shut off. So we're trying to see if we have enough corn in the bin to fill another truck and uh, how dire our situation really is. Are you okay? Okay. The bin isn't full? Wow. Well, okay, so this is actually really bad news. It would be much better if the bin was... You need a new grain bin? Whole new grain site. We're starting over. Um... It would be better, I think, if the bin was full and it was just like there was too much corn. However, if the bin is not full and the tube is getting plugged, it may not look very tall from down here, but it's all pretty high up there. Don't forget, don't do things like this without at least one other person on the ground. It's very important. I personally think in all aspects of farming to constantly use the buddy system. Uh, so whether that be having dad um, or Grant around, or me being around with them. It's always important to have someone on the ground, always ready to dial 911 or toss you a rope or something like that. Farming is really dangerous. Oh, this grain bin's kind of old, and we load in it and load out of it. It's really hard on the bin, so it's starting to split. Which we welded back together this summer, but it's just a patch. So we found another sheet with a door in it and we gotta go pick that up so we'll probably do that today too okay sounds good but yeah so this grain bin in the bottom is also rotting out Ooh. and the floor is junk so dad he wants to uh you know fix up the old but i'm like i'll just put a new grain bin but like i think new grain bins are like 260 280 a bushel to put up so and this is 20 house bushel bin so that's it's a lot of money right there. $4, and obviously this is the oldest grain bin here. And so it's kind of small, so we probably put like a 30,000 bushel bin. Mm. So that's even more expensive. Might need to talk to Cole the Corn Star about uh, yeah, Cole, bin building. Designed my new uh, bin site. <laughs> there we go. I'll, uh, I'll get in contact with him. <laughs> That's a lot of corn, Grant. Oh, yeah. How many bushels do you think this is? Oh, probably one at least. <laughs> probably more than one. Um, so do you see all those little blue buckets there? That's what the inside of a grain lay looks like. So it's literally just little buckets carrying the corn. But it looks like it got plugged. So Grant is... So this is, goes up this way, scoops this way, but now it's going backwards and the corn is coming out this way. Unfortunately, it's not supposed to be happening like that.
Keep it up, Grant. Yeah. This is uh, turning into more of a manual task here. All right, Grant, corn's not gonna scoop itself. Hey! Easy there. I know, it's end of December and we haven't even gotten a flurry. All right, so this is how the leg is supposed to sound. It is definitely a lot quieter than the first time we ran it. Good job, Grant. No joke. All right, now watch your fingers, everybody. That is a pinching machine 9000 right there. Pretty cool to see it work, though. I'm in the back corner of the farm. If I've ever taken you guys here. Bummer, dude. I think we just put some wind back in it and it'll pop right back on. No, probably. Also, oh, hey, trucks are here. That's good. I'm using this pipe cart to haul some bin parts and this wheel's four lug, but we have this other auger here and I think it has four lugs. Oh, never mind. It's only got three. I think it'll still work though. We haven't used this auger in a couple years, but as you can see, safety is number one priority around here. Check that out. I'll keep the fingers out of it. So I'm gonna swap this onto this and uh, make it road worthy again. Got him filling up. Taking some corn out of the bin, going to town. We got the tire chains. Who thinks this thing will make it all the way there? It's five miles there. All right. Now who thinks we're gonna make it all the way there? This thing is a certified oval. Uh, yeah, so we'll get there. This is why everything takes so long on the farm. To fix one thing, you gotta fix two other things to go fix that. Got her all pulled out of the weeds. Should probably put a little air in this thing. Oh, that's bent. That's bent. She'll buff. Also, check out this awesome Orphan Stumper that we got. This isn't even a demo. Brand new. We traded in our old Stumper, which just had the disc on the back. It did not have the choppers in it. With all the down corn this year, we wanted some more chopping action up front, so we picked this thing up and traded in the old one. We had the old one since like, I think 2012, so never gave us any trouble, but we figured it was time for an upgrade. So 16 row Orphan Stumper. Very, very excited to use this thing. We're not sponsored or anything by Orthman, but we love supporting our Nebraska companies. These things are made in Lexington, Nebraska, about an hour and a half away from here, so happy to support them. We have lots of Orphan stuff. There's one out there, and there's a couple more in the shed, so love this stuff. So here is what we're doing all of this for. So we got the pipe trailer here, and we cut out this section of the grain bin because we need a new door for one of ours. I've been using the uh, medium size JLG and it's been working awesome. So now we just gotta figure out how to load it on the trailer. I'll show you where I cut this out of. So here is where I took the bin sheet from. I just chopped the side out of a grain bin. So what happened here is that big windstorm, uh, all these bins blew over. This one didn't blow over, but a bin landed on it, so it was junk. And there was a bin here, bin there, another bin there. And that machine right there will turn a bin like this, or this, into a giant burrito in about 20 minutes. So it's gonna get smashed, so we just uh, chop the side out of it. 
Hey, Pepper. What? <laughs> Are you a jumper, my pal? After much finagling, we got her loaded. Now that thing looks just like an airplane wing, so we're gonna take her nice and easy so she don't take off on me. And we're right back where we started. So the bin we're gonna fix is full of corn, so we're not gonna fix it yet. So we're just gonna sit here until it either blows away or we fix it. But uh, yeah. So in addition to all the other craziness that happened today, I did two other things. One is I went over all of my 2021 crop yields with my crop insurance agent um, so that I could get paid out for any wind or hail damage that happened to my crops this year. So pretty much I paid a premium for a certain plan. So if my yields were under a certain number, then I would get paid out. And um, unfortunately, we did have some wind storms um, and hail damage in about... I think it was middle of July we had that storm so I was reporting all of my yields um, and going over all my maps and so then I can get paid out on my insurance which is kind of an unfortunate thing it's kind of like I'm glad I brought I bought insurance and purchased it and so I'm glad I got to use it but on the other hand I would much rather just grow a really successful good crop but then I'd be out the premium money. So it's that's kind of a tricky thing. Anyway, so I had that meeting. And then also I took a big test um, for nitrogen certification. So in order to put nitrogen onto my crops, I have to be educated on a whole bunch of rules and regulations um, because the, the way that we handle nitrogen and groundwater today is going to not affect me, but it will affect the groundwater in like 50 years. Um, and I want to do my best to make sure that my kids and my grandkids and my great grandkids um, have viable water to drink and viable ground to farm. So we want to do our best uh, to make sure that we are following all rules and regulations and are educated about what's going on. So I had to take a big test and I sent it in so hopefully hopefully I passed <laughs> um, but great day on the farm um, I know it's winter time but there's always something to do around the farm so keep sticking around um, I hope you guys have been enjoying following along my second full year my second full year farming and in 2022 it'll be the beginning of my third year farming so thanks for sticking around and we'll see you next time bye